Welcome back guys, there's a new trick that allows you to completely heal yourself without using any adrenaline or any ability. You will be back to 100% health without using second wind and you can even do that while you have the blade of yaminess equipped. So you can now completely heal yourself with the blade of yaminess. How cool is that? So I decided I will make a 424,000 warrior build and completely abuse this trick. In order to understand the new torch glitch we have to go back to a different video I made two years ago about another healing glitch that involved switching between your flaming attacks and your venomous attacks. Whenever you did that you completely healed your character. But this was never really viable since you needed two abilities on your ability wheel and it was rather slow and not very practical. But for the new trick you just have to equip your torch by pressing right on the d-pad and then immediately drop it and switch back to your weapon by pressing the light attack or the heavy attack. That way you also perform a switch between an elemental weapon which is your torch and your other weapon which are your normal swords or weapons whatever you use. So there is no ability involved and it completely heals you back to 100% health. But it only works when you also use the Falk's engraving with the reduced 25% health. And healing with no abilities is especially a game changer for the Blade of Yaminess. So I decided I will make a Blade of Yaminess build and show that to you. But of course you can use it in any build you want. Just use the new max damage build 2022 where you also have all your abilities and place another ability instead of using second wind. You can scrap using second wind forever in all your builds now. And second wind also was even weaker than using the torch because second wind never healed you entirely. But when you use the torch you are always healed entirely and you are back to full health. You can simply heal yourself within any battle. You will always find the time to equip your torch and switch back to your weapon. It is actually so simple and so game breaking that it will change the way you play this game forever when you watch this video. The actual build I used here is based of course on the new max damage build 2022. I equipped the blade of yaminess and also made a couple of changes and the results are truly amazing. I got over 3.3 million damage with the light attack, over 4.8 million damage with the heavy attack and nearly 15 million damage with the charged heavy attack. Even the normal arrows topped out at over 7 million damage and of course the mercenaries no matter how much health they actually have they will always just die from a normal assassination. This is the most purest sword build you can actually make and it makes playing with the Blade of Yaminess viable for the first time because it fixes the most severe issue of the Blade of Yaminess that you were not able to heal yourself. But now you can finally do that without interrupting the game, without losing your crit chance and crit damage multipliers. So here in the inventory we have 424,000 warrior damage and the insane almost 1.1 million assassin damage that is absolute overkill. Of course we also use the big hunt bow and by doing that we will add all the big hunt bows 6495 dps to our left melee weapon which will also be the blade of yaminess and we will use the 400,000 damage when we shoot our arrows. The Blade of Yaminess will have Assassin damage, damage swords and 250% all damage but you can't use abilities. But of course we will use our torch just to heal ourselves so that's not an issue. I engraved it with armor penetration because armor penetration will give you the most damage. Other options would be that you engrave permanent fire damage on your Yaminess or you use 50% crit damage instead. Then on the second sword we will use a perfect epic warrior sword which can be the Hoplite sword. This is on sale this week even at Zargon so if you don't have hate or Sarpa you can also get the one from Zargon this week. It has warrior damage, critical damage, damage to swords. Here we engrave the 100% all damage but health cap to 25%. That is actually needed to do the healing. If you don't use the Fox engraving you cannot heal yourself. It will just simply not work. So you have to play with the Fox engraving but that doesn't matter because the game does not kill you in a single hit anyway. So just equip it and heal yourself every time you get hit. Then on the big on bow we will use convert 50% hunter damage bonus to all damage. We will use the hunter damage conversion because the hunter damage percentages still exist in the game. And the core for engraving also gives us 200% hunter damage. So we get 200% hunter damage and we can get another 100% and convert that to be warrior and assassin damage. In total we will get 341.5% assassin and warrior damage when we use hunter damage conversion and the core for engraving.
The epic items here will be the same as for the new max damage build 2022. We have a perfect epic helmet with warrior damage, 20% crit chance, 20% damage to swords and daggers and 30% damage to swords. Warrior bracers with warrior damage, 50% crit damage, 100% crit damage while full health and we engrave 10% crit chance. Of course if you find these engravings in a different order just engrave what is missing. Then you have the belt here with warrior damage, 10% crit chance, 100% critical damage while full health. Here we will use the Nemean Lion set engraving. If you don't have that, of course you can also use the belt of the swings or you have to put 10% crit chance on your bow and move the hunter damage conversion on a different item. On the torso we will use warrior damage, 10% all damage, 50% crit damage and we even grave the 100% all damage but minus 100% resistances from the Corfu DLC. The boots will have warrior damage, 100% crit damage, 20% crit chance and 20% warrior damage. You can engrave 20% warrior damage if you upgrade it to the maximum 20%. All that will result in the insane stats of 925% warrior damage, 786% assassin damage, we will have 650% crit damage at 95% chance and we will also have a lot of negative resistances but that totally doesn't matter because the game never kills you in a single hit. You can just use your torch and you will be back to full health immediately. Of course with the Blade of Yaminess we are pretty much limited to our standard passive abilities here. We will use 6 cents of course because that doubles our hunter damage and slows down our enemies. We will unlock the poison fire arrows, we will use archery master. The charged heavy attack will be your strongest remaining warrior attack so definitely get that one. And then of course go for the weapons master for the additional 10% crit chance and the 40% warrior damage. Gear master also can't hurt even if we have low resistances. And then you can actually use the flaming attacks to unlock the additional 40% fire damage from fire mastery if you want to play with fire damage. Don't forget stealth master for the additional out of combat damage overnight. And of course the shadow assassin that gives you 50% additional critical damage and assassin damage as well. The basic mastery point distribution should be 12 points on hunter damage because we will also convert that damage to be warrior damage, then 12 points on crit chance, crit damage and also headshot damage. In the warrior tab we will go for 12 points on warrior damage itself, then another 8 points on fire damage, 8 points on armor penetration. If you don't have so many points you can actually skip those. But here most important 15 points on damage swords, 15 points on the crit stuff, 12 points on the damage while full health and also 12 points on health gain per adrenaline spend. That one is actually optional so you can actually save those 12 points and if you also save those points on armor penetration and fire damage then you might only need 170 or 180 points to make this build. If you have more than 400 points of course you can max out the hunter damage, you can max out the crit chance, crit damage and headshot damage. Go for a couple of points here on the hunter stuff, adrenaline, not consume special errors and also damage of hunter abilities. Then in the warrior tab of course you will max out warrior damage and further down we will max out fire damage and armor penetration and also put a couple of points on damage dealt restored as health alongside with a general increase for all our abilities. And in the assassin tab we will go for damage whenever time is slowed down, max out assassin damage, absolutely max out damage swords, max out the critical chance, critical damage, damage while full health. If you have the points go for a couple of adrenaline increases, health gain per adrenaline spend and also damage for leads and bosses. Even more points could be spent on cooldown duration or even a general increase for your assassin abilities. So I hope you like the new build and the new glitch. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time. Thank you